video is about rational functions again. This time we are finding vertical asymptotes and holes from the equation. Okay, so this is wordy. Don't get overwhelmed. Just take it in baby steps. Vertical asymptotes. Okay, to find a vertical asymptote, you're going to factor the top and the bottom completely. Cancel any common factors. We'll talk about this other side over here in a minute. Cancel any common factors, and then set remaining factors in the denominator equal to zero and solve it for x. So we'll do lots of examples. Don't worry, but here's the rule. Factor, cancel, set denominator equal to zero. Now, what happens if there are common factors? For instance, if like x minus 1, let's say you had this. x minus 1 and x minus 1 are common factors, so those two would be canceled out and to set remaining factors equal to 0 in the denominator. So I would just, for vertical asymptote, I would just set the x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve it for x. Now, if there is a common factor, you can, re you can cancel. That represents a hole in the graph. Okay? To find the xy coordinate of the hole, you solve the common factor for x. So in this case, x minus 1 equals 0. That means x is 1. Cancel out the common factors, and then I plug that x into the remaining equation. So what's left when I cancel it is x plus 3 over x plus 4. So I put this x that I solved for in there. So 1 plus 3 over 1 plus 4 is 4 fifths. So that means the whole exists where x is 1 and y is 4 fifths. That's where the whole of the graph will be when I graph it. So here's some examples. Let's solve for holes and vertical asymptotes. The first thing, remember, is to factor completely. So x squared over x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1. There are no common factors here I can cancel. Nothing I can cancel here. So I just say no for holes. There's no holes. Vertical asymptotes. Okay, I set whatever is in the denominator equal to 0 and solve it for x. It's very, very much like domain. So x is negative 1, x is positive 1. So these are my vertical asymptotes. Yes, you can have more than one. That is common. So I'm done with example 1. That's all I have to do. Example 2, I have to factor first. So I didn't left arm. A times C is negative 2. Two terms that multiply to give you negative 2, but add to give you 1. 2, negative 1, divide by A. X is made it up. So the top is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 1. Bottom, negative 6. Two terms that multiply to negative 6, but add to negative 1 is negative 3 and a positive 2. Divide by a, can't reduce. Add my x's. So I get x minus 3 and x plus 2. All right, notice you have a common factor of x plus 2. Those will cancel. So I have a yes on this. And what I know so far is that where x plus 2, solve it for 0, x is negative 2. Now, to get the y value, remember, I take what's left of the equation, so x minus 1 over x minus 3, and I'm going to plug in this x value I just solved for, negative 2. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So what I really have is negative 3 over negative 5, which is positive 3 fifths. That's the y value of the whole. Vertical asymptote, remember, you set whatever factor is left over equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0, so x is 3. All right, the other factors have canceled oh, and gone away. You just deal with what's left. Let's try another one. Factor, factor, factor. Top, left arm, negative 3. Two terms. Uh, give me a positive 3 and a negative 1. Divide by 1. Can't reduce that. So the top will factor as x plus 3, x minus 1. The bottom is x plus 3. All right, common factor here. So that means there is a hole. And where is this hole located? Well, x plus 3 equals 0. x is negative 3. So the x value is a negative 3. Now to find the y value, I plug it into whatever part of the equation is left. All that's left is this. So I put negative 3 minus 1 over 1. 
which is negative 4. There's the coordinate for my hole. Now, vertical asymptote. I don't have any x's in the denominator to solve for x, so I just say none. All right, putting it all together. Okay, example four. You'll notice that it's already factored for you, and you should notice pretty quickly that you have an x plus two on top, x plus two on bottom. That indicates a hole. So I can answer this part, yes, at, and remember the procedure, x plus 2, set so that equal to 0, that means the x value is negative 2. And to find the y value, I'm just going to plug negative 2 into the remaining equation. The equation is now simplified down to just this, x plus 4 over x minus 3. So if I put in a negative 2 there, I have negative 2 plus 4 over negative 2 minus 3. That gives me a 2 over negative 5. So my y value, or y coordinate, I'm sorry, is 2 over 5, and that would be a negative 2 fifths. So there's my hole. Now I can work on to x intercept, y intercept. x intercept, remember, is just setting the top equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0. x is negative 4. So I have one x intercept. x equal to negative 4. So I have negative 4, comma 0. I only have one x intercept. The other factor that was on top originally is gone because it's a hole. So I only have one x intercept. Remember for your y-intercept, you're going to put a 0 in everywhere there's an x. So it's going to give me 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 3. Reduce that, you get negative 4 thirds. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 4 thirds. And lastly, vertical asymptote, what factors are left in the bottom? And I set those equal to 0. There's only one, that means there's only one vertical asymptote. So it's just x equals 3. So hopefully that puts all together what we've done this week and you can catch on to that. We'll keep practicing, don't worry. So for the whisk, I want you to do the same process. You have to factor first, so don't miss that step. This is a lot to go, lot going on. Come with questions in class if you need to, and we will work on it tomorrow.